So please feel free to come to any position that feels especially grounded or empowering for you right now. A position that you can focus on your breath. And as you come to this position, continue to find yourself here now, present and grounded. And for those of you who are on social media, you've seen me post a couple times about this book called Breath by James Nestor. And I sent you in your email today with the link a little bit about what we're learning about the healthiest way to breathe. So we're gonna start there. Bringing yourself into a slow nose breathing if possible. Breathing in through the nose and out through the nose, slow. Maybe a count of six, seven or eight whatever you can comfortably do. So again, we are breathing in through the nose, out to the nose, a long, slow breath, six, seven or eight counts whatever is comfortable for you. If it's not possible to breathe comfortably through your nose, of course, breathe through your mouth. But if you can breathe through your nose, please do that. It's the healthiest way you can breathe. Today, I'm gonna to share with you a little bit about the, where nasal breathing is spoken about from very ancient Chinese philosophy and texts. And then tomorrow I'm gonna to share with you a little bit about where nasal breathing is shared in ancient Indian yoga-based texts. So this is from the Zhu Dynasty stone inscription in 500 BC. In transporting the breath, the inhalation must be full. When it is full, it has big capacity. When it has big capacity, it can be extended. When it is extended, it can penetrate downward. When it penetrates downward, it will become calmly settled. When it is calmly settled, it will be strong and firm. When it is strong and firm, it will germinate. When it germinates, it will grow. When it grows, it will retreat upward. When it retreats upward, it will reach the top of the head. The secret power of providence moves above. The secret power of the earth moves below. He who follows this will live. He who acts against this will die. This is one of a few Chinese teachings that teach the power of a whole full nasal breath. And lots of science and studies and even ancient tradition have pointed to approximately six seconds in, six seconds out, six breaths per minute, slower is better. So we establish our foundational flow through our breath. We begin here. And this breathing pattern will guide the rest of our practice. Allow it to become foundational. Allow it to germinate, to grow, to connect you with earth and sky. to feel yourself both grounded and relaxed and tension-free 
and also empowered and rising and awakening and creating spaciousness in your body. Let your breath flow, slow, long, and through the nose if possible. And begin to notice how you feel as you breathe this way. Good, now allow your breath to continue, the soft Ujjayi breath. As you relax your shoulders, maybe turn your palms up if you're seated and take a little bit of slow, easy movements in your neck. Wherever you are, slow, easy movements in your neck. Warming up into the neck and shoulder muscles. And now see if you can time your movements with your breath. Move one way all the way to the end of your exhale, that six, seven, or eight counts. And then you'll move the other way all the way to the end of your inhale. And as you start to feel awake through your neck and shoulders, you've juiced up that area, created hydration, your movement. We're gonna come around and meet in child's pose. And as you come to meet in child's pose, breathe into your low back. And then slowly begin to rise your hips, spread your fingers, option for downward facing dog. If you'd rather not practice down dog, you could also do dolphin forearms on the ground or hold all fours and focus on a neutral spine. From wherever you are, whether it's an all fours or, new, or down dog, you're gonna reach one heel back, straighten one leg, and then come back to bent knees. Reach the other heel back, straighten the other leg, and then come back to bent knees. So you can do this again on all fours or in downward facing dog. So we're awakening into our ankles, our lower legs, our feet. If you're a down dog, broaden your back, feel your shoulders broad and open. Lots of space between your ears and your shoulders. Good, after you've awakened your ankles and legs, lower legs a bit, let's everybody inhale back to all fours and then make little circles with your wrists or around your wrists. Awakening through the wrists and the shoulders and the hips and the knees here in this circular motion. And now same thing, other direction, circling. Excellent, beautiful. Now come back to center. We're gonna come to cat back, arcing your back, tucking your chin. And then on the next inhale into cow back, reach the heart center forward, the tailbone back. Slow flow, just two more times. Exhale, cat back. 
Inhale, cow. Now the next time you inhale, lengthen the spine. And now take your right foot towards your right thumb. You can provide extra padding for your left knee if you like by rolling up the side of your mat or taking a prop underneath that left knee. But let's come up to a 90-90 lunge, lengthening from the root, the pelvic floor, up to the top of the head. Take your arms to your sides and kind of shake out your arms. So feel your arms really relaxed as you feel your core really active. Good, bring the hands forward, press your palms lightly toward each other. Inhale, lengthen, then exhale, pull back like you're pulling back on a bow and turn your chest to the side of the mat. Sweep your arm forward as you exhale, inhale, open the chest to the side of the mat. Exhale, come back to center. Good. Now, as you do this, if this feels like, ooh, a little wobbly, you could also do this with this, this front hand on something, a chair, something to stabilize you, a wall, or even better, engage Uddiyana point two inches below your belly button. Feel a sense of being balanced from your navel center so that even though you're moving, you feel steady and firm. You also can heel toe this forward foot out if you feel like you're gonna lose your balance. One more time, open up, hold this twist, hold this twisting lunge, breathing, inhale, lengthening, exhale, twisting just a little bit more. Keep feeling strength of your waist, strength of your back muscles. Excellent, from this twisting, you can stay here or take one hand across the thigh or take your elbow across the thigh, maybe even hands to prayer. Good, you got it, nice. Slowly come back up through center. And then we're gonna come back to all fours. We'll switch our legs. So now uh, extra padding underneath the right knee if you choose. Left foot comes forward. Finding ourselves standing tall from the root to the crown. Kneeling tall. Shake out your arms, feel a sense of balance from your Udi on a point two inches below your belly button. Press your hands lightly together and then row back, opening your chest, sweep forward. Row back and sweep forward. Good. Again, if you feel like you're gonna lose your balance, take your front foot wider or engage more from the physical center of your body, two inches below your belly button. So even though, yes, we are strengthening our back and opening our chest and strengthening our waist, we are also strengthening our core. We are engaging our core stabilities to stay balanced. Let's do that one or two more times. Good, the next time we're gonna hold it. As we hold, reach both arms out, strengthen from the waist and upper back. Keep the front knee solid over the ankle. Option to stay here or take one hand across, or you could even take your elbow across with or without prayer hands. We'll come back up through center, come back around to face the front of the mat, and then back to all fours. Now switch the extra padding underneath to your left knee again, and do one more thing here from, from the knees. And then you're gonna take your right leg straight out to the side. Excellent. From here, come up onto your fingertips. Maybe curl your back toes if that helps you feel more balanced. And then engage from the back of the body to lift yourself up. Preparing for gate pose. We're gonna shift the ribs, the left, the, le where the left knee is down, the right leg is out. We're shifting the ribs to the left. And then option to reach the elbow or the arm, stretching into the side body for gate pose. Relax your right shoulder consciously. 
Inhale, lengthen through the arms. And then as you exhale, slowly take your fingertips toward the floor. Right toes can stay on the mat or come off the mat into balancing half moon. So either kneeling side plank foot on the mat or kneeling half moon foot off the mat. Just your left fingertips are touching the floor, not your whole palm. And then using the strength of your waist, rise back up to gate. Inhaling to gate. And then exhaling over to kneeling side plank or kneeling half moon. And now flow with your breath. Feeling a sense of being centered and balanced. Remember that center point of your body, two inches below your belly button, feel a sense of being balanced from there. Good, you got it. And remember, if you're taking care of a low back or if you just wanna move a little bit less big, you don't have to touch your fingertips down. You could also just move side to side as much as it feels good for you. Excellent, now the next time you come down to either side plank or kneeling half moon, pause and breathe. Excellent. Now, if possible, lift your leg to kneeling half moon, turn your heel up and your big toe down, and then touch your big toe only to the floor and reach your heel up to the sky eight times. Awakening your internal rotator muscles to help balance your hips. Good, just like that, keep going. Last one, hold again, breathe. And then option, just an option to reach around for the ankle for a kneeling half bow. Remember, you don't have to take every option. Nice, Put the, let the foot come back down, lift up with the strength of your waist, find your hip creases. So remember, your hips are not up here. This is your pelvis, your hips are down here. So we're gonna hinge from our hips, walk the hands to the mat and come to a down dog arm. Reach the hips up and back and breathe into the stretch you feel. Let your hands be as wide as it feels comfortable for your shoulders. Bend the elbows if that feels better. One more long exhale here and then slowly walk the hands back underneath the shoulders. We're gonna switch our knees. So pat, extra patting now for the right knee. The left leg comes out to the side. Come up onto your fingertips. Use the strength of the backside of your body to lift yourself up. And we're gonna shift the ribs to the right, reach the right elbow or right arm into gate pose, Padigasana. Keep going just like holding that, just like that. And then slowly as you cartwheel over, touch your fingertips toward the mat. They might not touch, you don't have to touch. You can come halfway down too, if that feels better for you. If your hand or fingertips is on the mat or on a block, then option to lift that back leg. Just an option. Remember, you don't have to take every option. And now we flow, inhaling to gate. Exhaling toward kneeling side plank or kneeling half moon. Letting your breath guide you. Notice how good it feels to awaken these side body muscles. So much of our daily activity, even our sports, don't address these side body muscles. This is really good cross training for the body, really a good awakening for the body. The outer hips, the outer shoulders, the sides of the waist. Everything getting 
awakened with movement, hydrated, circulated, stronger, more flexible. Excellent. Now the next time you come down, fingertips or fists or palm or block, lift the waist, kneeling side plank or kneeling half moon. Holding, breathing. And now turn your big toe down and your heel up, internally rotating this hip. And from this internally rotated position, touch your big toe down and reach your heel up toward the sky. Good. Have you, are you still remembering your nasal breathing? Long, slow nasal breathing. Good. And then holding breathing, either side, kneeling side plank or kneeling half moon. Option to take that kneeling half bow. And then grounding the foot into kneeling side plank. We're gonna inhale and rise up with the strength of our waist. Find your hip creases, hinge from your hips, pressing the hips up and back, reaching the arms forward toward a down dog arm. Slowly walk the hands back. Come back to all fours. And then from all fours, we're gonna walk our feet toward our hands into a standing forward fold. Relaxing to the head, the neck, the shoulders. And let your knees bend enough <clears throat> that you feel your ribs on top of your thighs. Now gently turn your head no. And then slowly turn your head, yes. Bend the knees a lot. Inhale, rise up through your arms. And then exhale, bring your hands to your heart. As we rise tall from the arches of the feet to the top of the head, feel a sense of grounding, rooting through your feet, spreading your toes. Feeling firmly foundational, stira, steady, strong, and stable. Feel a sense of rising from the arches of the feet to the top of the head and softening shoulders, opening, broadening across the shoulders. Good. In mountain pose, let's inhale and reach our arms back and open our hearts to a standing back bend. Now, as we do this, we're going to also reach one leg back today. So a kapata standing back bend. So we reach one heel back. Try to keep your toes pointed forward though, as you reach your heel back. Try not to let your toes point out to the side. So one heel back, toes can be on the ground or off the ground in this standing back bend. Exhale, come to chair utkatasana. Inhale, same thing other side. Pulling arms, heart reaching, back muscle strengthening, toes on the ground or off the ground. And now on your breath, exhale, long, slow, exhale to chair. Inhale, long, slow, inhale to one-legged standing back bend. Exhale to chair. Utkatasana. Inhale, ekapada ustrasana. One-legged camel pose. Keep moving with your breath and notice your range of motion. How low do you comfortably go? 
how far back do your arms come comfortably with empowerment, with fluidity, but without pain or strain. Intensity and pain are different. Let's do one more time each side. Until you feel balanced on both sides. Remember to do your best to keep your toes pointed forward. And then meet me in chair, your version of chair. If you're taking care of a low back, keep your hands close to your body in chair, maybe on your thighs or on your heart. And now everybody bring your hands to your pelvis. And we're gonna move our pelvis a little bit into a cow back and then to a cat back. Cow back in chair pose, cat back in chair pose. Now move just through your pain-free range of motion which always you should be doing, but I'm just reminding you. So maybe it's a very small movement in the pelvis. And then come to that perfect balance between those two. Inhale, reach one knee forward, toes on the ground or off the ground, reaching your arms forward, like you're offering something. Exhale, come back to chair, hands can be on the thighs or you can reach your arms back. Inhale, the other knee comes forward. We're gonna do that just two times each side, either airplane arms or hands on the thighs. Inhale, knee forward. Exhale, chair pose with airplane arms or hands on the thighs. Inhale, knee forward. Exhale, chair. One more time each side. Good, last time. Now we're gonna come into that again, but we're gonna add something this time. So as we come up, either toes on the ground or off the ground, finding balance, lifting from your core, we're gonna combine what we learned earlier with, with, with this pose. We're gonna row back, open the chest for a standing spinal twist. You can stay here or bring the hand across the thigh, or you could extend the leg. All options are good. Remember your toes can even be on the ground here. Hold that standing spinal twist, breathe. The strength through the waist and upper back. Good, exhale, back to arrow arms chair. Inhale, other side. Finding balance, now row, turn the chest, open the heart, strengthen the waist in the back. Bring one hand across if you like. You could keep the leg bent or extend the leg. Toes on the ground is an option. Come back to arrow arms chair. Exhale, fold all the way down to forward fold. Inhale, lift the heart, sit back to chair pose. Rise all the way up. As you exhale through chair pose, come all the way down. Good, we're gonna step our right foot back to a lunge. As that right foot comes back to a lunge, either bring your hands up to your thigh or reach your arms out or up. So coming into a lunge, a standing lunge, arms reaching or supporting, you choose in this lunge. Feeling your breath, hearing your breath. Inhale, rise to your waist. Exhale, open into warrior two. In your warrior two, you know what to do. Ribs over the pelvis, pelvis balanced and spine neutral. Gaze down your forward hand. Feel a sense of opening across both your heart and your hips. Actively, yet with a sense of calm, comfort. Joy, come back to your slow breathing if you've lost it. Your slow, whole nasal breathing, soft, you dry your breath. Good. For today, either bring your fingertips to your temples or your rib cage. So lower or higher. What feels best for you? 
And then from here, we're gonna touch the elbow toward the forward knee, doesn't have to touch it. And then inhale the elbow toward the sky. Exhale, touch the elbow toward the forward knee. Inhale toward the sky. So I'm doing this pretty big. You could also do this just a couple inches. If you're taking care of a low back, maybe just a few inches here. So we are doing here a very core focused side angle and reverse warrior. Notice how different it feels when you're not focusing on moving your arms. You're focusing on moving from the center of your body, your core. Excellent. Now the next time you come up to reverse warrior, hold that. Take your lower arm and relax it, maybe even shake it out. Good. Now your upper arm, you can keep reaching your elbow or you could reach your arm. Does that feel different for you? Inhale, take the arms parallel to the floor, straighten both of your legs. Lift through the center from the arches of the feet to the pelvic floor. And now shift your pelvis or your ribs and lightly lower your fingertips toward your shin or your thigh into Chirikonasana, triangle pose. Expand space across the heart. Feel your breath. Keep holding triangle pose, breathing, lifting from the ground, the earth to the sky. Lifting energy through the arches of your feet into your pelvic floor, from your heart, through your arms. Exhale, bend the forward knee and inhale and rise to warrior two. Sweep your back arm down and then forward back to lunge. And from this lunge position, exhale to downward facing dog. As you inhale, come forward to a plank. Lengthen back to your heels and forward to the crown of your head, broaden your back. Feel a sense of strength deep and low in your abdominals. In this plank position, remember all of your plank options. You can hold plank here, you can take your knees down, you can take your forearms down. And you have a choice to hold plank for one more breath or to come forward on your exhale and lower a six count exhale to chaturanga. A six count inhale to cobra or up dog. So a slow breath. Everybody meet back in down dog when you feel ready. So let's practice that vinyasa a couple more times. We inhale forward to plank and we hold plank for another six count inhale and exhale or exhale and inhale. And then your, or six count exhale down to chaturanga. And then inhale cobra or up dog six count. Everybody exhale back to downward dog six counts. So play with that a little bit. Holding your plank for an exhale and an inhale or lowering to chaturanga for a slow exhale and a slow inhale. There's sort of a joke in vinyasa yoga that the, the shortest exhale in vinyasa is the chaturanga. <laughs> so see if you can really slow it down if you're doing chaturanga. When you're ready, let's come back to downward dog or child's pose. Take a couple more deep breaths into your low back. And then on the next inhale, rise your right leg back or up. Breathe into the stretch you feel through your inner thighs. And then sweep the right foot toward the right thumb. Coming to Anjaniyasana, lunge pose. Your hands can be on your forward thigh or reaching out or up. Find a place that feels right for you right now. You can soften your back knee if you're taking care of your low back. That really helps to balance your pelvis. Or extend your back knee if that feels good for you. 
On the next inhale, rise to the waist. And then exhale and open into warrior two. Remembering what you know about warrior two in your body. Free up your toes. In fact, everybody lift up your toes. Actively lift your toes. Activate your arches and then relax your toes back down. And remember, you can take your fingertips to your lower ribs <clears throat> or to your shoulders or to your temples. And we're gonna inhale and reach the ribs toward the short end of the mat, reach your elbow up, and then exhale and take the elbow toward the forward knee. Inhale, elbow up toward the sky, as far as it feels comfortable for you. Exhale, elbow down toward the knee. Allow your breath to guide you. Notice where you feel strength awakening. Good. Now the next time you reach up to reverse warrior, hold that, relax your back, back arm and shake it out. And then option to reach your front arm. Inhale, lengthen both legs, reach arms out parallel to the floor. Shift the pelvis and slowly lower into Trikonasana, triangle pose. Expanding open across the heart. Feeling your breath. Good, you got it. Keep letting space open across your heart, lengthen through your spine. One more breath here. Exhale, bend the forward knee. Inhale, rise back to warrior two. Slowly take the arms down toward the front of the mat into a low lunge and step your back foot forward this time to forward fold. Inhale, rise the arms up. Exhale, fold back down. And now your left foot steps back to the lunge. And as the left foot steps back, this time we're gonna stay low in our lunge. Inhale, come gently forward and down. And then as you exhale, come back and up with your hips. Inhale, forward and down. Exhale, back and up. We're gonna do this just about three, four or five more times, nice and slow. Let's slow it down now. If you haven't already, slow it down to your slow nasal breathing. And notice what you experience when you move slower. Do you feel more fibers of your muscles receiving the stretch? More mindfulness more awareness. Good, one more time. Excellent. Now as you come back today with your hips back and up, come up on your fingertips or blocks if you have them and reach your heart center toward your toes. So think of lengthening your sternum toward your toes and your toes toward your sternum. Excellent. Just like that. Good. Now, keep doing this stretch, but take your toes and turn them in. Notice how that changes the stretch. So you're turning your hip, internally rotating your hip, and then same thing, but uh, the opposite thing actually. 
toes out. Inhale, come forward to that low lunge. And now listen carefully, from this low lunge, we're going to bring the right hand up on the thigh and reach your left arm, either elbow or arm over into a side bend. If that feels like too much, do the same thing with your hand on the ground. Excellent, release. And then we're gonna step this forward foot back to downward dog or a child's pose. Inhale forward to a plank, holding that plank for a six second exhale and a six second inhale or lowering chaturanga for six seconds. Long exhale and then long inhale for cobra or up dog or locust. So slow, whole breath vinyasa, or holding your plank for that breath. Do that two more times. Awakening fluidity and strength in your upper body, your shoulders, your spine, your chest, your arms, your back, until we all meet back in child's pose or down dog. If you're in down dog, on the next inhale, reach your left leg, hold and breathe. Receive the benefits of this inversion. When you feel ready, sweep your left foot toward your left thumb. Inhale, hips come gently forward and down. Long, slow inhale, feel it all. Exhale, hips come back and up. Long, slow exhale, feel it all. So if we move too quickly, we miss some of what's, what's available to us here. Some of the awareness, some of the physical benefits. We also miss the profound benefits of slow breathing. So let yourself move slow with your hips, with your knees, with your ankles, with your hands. Now the next time you come back, stay there. And as you come back, come high onto your fingertips or blocks and lift the chest and the toes toward each other. As much as you can, lengthen through your heart space, forward. Good, now holding this stretch, turn your toes in, turning that whole hip, knee, toe in, internally rotating the hip. Noticing how that changes the stretch into your hamstring muscles. Slowly come back to center and now turn your toes out. Come into your forward lunge. We're gonna add that side bend. So left hand can come on the thigh and you can take your right hand to the side on the floor or you can come upright and re reach your right arm over. Excellent, slowly bring your hands down to the mat, curl your back toes, lift your back knee and walk your hands down to the side of the mat into a straddle. Take the outer edges of the feet parallel and you can use a block, a pillow, a water bottle. If you have something, even a coffee table, elevate your hands, bring yourself a little taller so your spine is a little more parallel to the floor. 
Inhale, lengthen, and then exhale again. We're gonna twist. So we're twisting from a few different positions today to create more thoracic mobility. And notice how that you know, affects the rest of your body. So here we feel not only the strength of our waist and upper back and the suppleness of those as well, we also feel what's happening in the back of our thighs, our inner thighs, our outer ankles. Inhale to open your twist here. Exhale to close. This is an open twist. It's more appropriate to allow the inhale to be the opening. Now see if you can really slow down your inhale and exhale. To allow your breath to be whole. Good, when that feels complete for you, relax into straddle. Begin to feel a stretch across the back of the legs, the outside of the ankles. Breathe into it. Good, on the next inhale, lift your heels up and take your heels in. So your toes point slightly out now. Either keep your fingertips on the floor or bend your knees and walk your hands up to your thighs. Now we're gonna come into Skandasana. We exhale, bend your right knee, align with your right toe. Inhale, come up through center. Exhale, left knee. So we can do this high Skandasana, hands on the thigh supporting. Or we could do a mid skandasana, arms out like wings, less external support, more internal support. Or we could take our fingertips down to support a lower skandasana. Wherever you are, keep flowing a few more times. And then let's meet with our hands on the ground, if that's comfortable for your low back. Now stay over to the right and feel that stretch. Breathe into it. You can stay here or you can come lower with support, wherever it feels good for your ankle, your knee, your hip, your low back. And then holding the stretch on the other side, higher or lower. You can even hold the stretch with your forearm on your thigh. Good, good choices, everybody. Slowly come back through center and take prasarita one more time. So turn the outer edges of the feet parallel and relax into the straddle. Notice if it feels any different now that we've done skandasana. Excellent. From here, let's come down to all fours. And we're going to come around to a seat. In the seat, feel yourself sitting tall. And from this tall seat, bend your knees now. And bring your hands back behind you. You have a couple choices. If you have a wall really close, go to that wall. This is a really nice option. And we're gonna come into a Arda Agni Stambhasana wall supported here. If you don't have a wall nearby, no problem. 
You can do the same thing with the support of your hands. So yeah, we can use our hands to support us or it can bring a wall to your upper back or a, or a couch or whatever is nearby could work too. Good. If you have the wall nearby, kind of notice how you can use the wall to lift your heart a little bit and to feel the stretch into your outer hip and thigh. Breathe into what you feel in your hip. Really good hip stretch here. Good. One more long exhale here. And we're gonna switch our legs. So if you're doing this supported Ardha Agni Sambhasana half fire pillar pose, you can do so with your upper back at a couch, a wall, anything that's sturdy and stable and can hold your weight. Breathe into what you feel here. Excellent. From here, we're gonna come into more of an inner hip and thigh stretch. So either butterfly or um, straddle position. And you're welcome again to scoot your hips back and use a wall to help you sit up nice and tall. Notice how that feels to really have support for your spine and focus on relaxing into your hip stretch. Good. Each inhale to length your spine. And as you exhale, Gently relax into your hips a bit more. Now slowly draw your knees up. So we're gonna either, you have two choices for Shavasana today, our final relaxation. You could come up to legs up the wall if you're near a wall and you wanna take your legs up the wall or you can come out to your mat and come to Shavasana. So choosing either one. And Shavasana, remember, is lying on your back. Relax on your back. Or if you're gonna come into that legs up the wall, you kind of scoot your hips into the wall and take your legs. So you choose what feels best for you today. And as you come to relaxation, let's return to our slow, long nasal breathing.
naturally, as you start to feel relaxed, you can let go of any thinking of your breath. And just really relax into presence and now. If you don't feel relaxed, keep focusing on your breath. Keep letting yourself relax. Keep allowing yourself to relax. Knowing that this is profoundly beneficial for your health. The ancient Chinese taught the breathe inhale through the mouth is called Nichi, adverse breath, which is extremely harmful. States a passage from the Tao. Be careful not to have the breath inhaled through the mouth. And the same teaching says, what the bodily form depends on is breath or chi. And what breath replies on is form. When the breath is perfect, the form is perfect too. Yoga teaches practice, not perfection. We do our best. We continue to practice until the practice becomes perfectly aligned with our life. So whatever you face today, whether it be joy or sadness or challenge or ease, playfulness or work, whatever's here for you. Your breath is a powerful tool that you can come to, to remember. So simply breathe through your nose and create slow, long breath. It's one of the easiest, simplest, no cost, always with you, practices for profound health benefits, mental and physical health.
In yoga, we call it prana. In Chinese medicine, qi. Energy, life force. The modern science supports this. 60 different studies showing the benefits of nasal breathing. All in agreement. So return to your breath if you haven't already. And let your breath begin to inspire you to move into this day with a sense of peace and balance and joy. Arising when you feel ready to a seat. And once you feel yourself here, of course you can always linger longer on your back if you choose. But once you are ready to arise into this day, you're welcome to bring one or both hands to your heart. Remembering that this symbol, hands together, Anjali Mudra, is symbolic of honoring, reverence, respect, and love for self and other. Take a moment to feel that awe, that reverence for self and other and nature and all who have stewarded this land before us. Thank you for sharing yoga. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being beautifully you. And I want to say one thing because I'm sharing this class with others that if you would like to attend other classes with Flow, you can go to flowhoodriver.com and there is a page that says pre-register for classes and find out more.